The mechanic is all about the Batmobile, and it presents a really intriguing idea. Someone outside the Bat family is responsible for the design, creation, and maintenance of the famous vehicle. Penguin is also the villain in this story in a plotline lifted straight from Batman Returns. In fact, that may not be the only part of this episode inspired by that film. I'll explain soon. After the Batmobile is heavily damaged while in pursuit of Penguin's gang, the dynamic duo bring it to a secure location to get it fixed by a mechanic and his daughter. Earl and Marva Cooper don't know who Batman is, but he pays Earl handsomely for the work while giving them ample space and equipment to work with. Through trying to fix their own car, one of Penguin's henchmen brings in his old friend from an auto parts distributor. Arnold Rundell has information he thinks Cobblepot will be interested in. He's noticed that very unusual parts have recently been ordered for what he thinks has to be the one and only Batmobile. Rundle hands over Earl's information, and soon enough, Penguin and his gang crash Cooper's secret repair spot. They kidnap Marva and force Earl to sabotage the Batmobile to give Penguin control over it. Cooper follows through and returns the vehicle to Batman and Robin. Soon after, they're chasing Penguin again. But this time, Oswald is one step ahead of them. Directing regular Kevin Altieri helmed this episode, with Randy Rogel writing from a story by Laren Bright and Steve Perry. Let's just get the obvious out of the way first. The concept of Penguin rigging and controlling the Batmobile was featured pretty prominently in Batman Returns. I'm not sure why it was repeated here because it's not that revolutionary of an idea. They even have Penguin's hideout in the sewer with that big yellow duck being used again. However, the story surrounding all this is pretty cool and definitely unique in a few ways. Introducing a new character who helped Batman become what he is adds another layer to his inner circle. The curtain is sort of peeled back here to show us the Dark Knight doesn't do this alone. Of course, we have Robin and later Batgirl helping him directly, and Alfred performs a whole variety of tasks that keeps Batman going, but seeing an outside person heavily involved in a major part of Batman's arsenal makes everything feel just a touch more realistic. It reminds me a little bit of Lucius Fox's role in the Dark Knight trilogy. He provides Christian Bale's Batman with all his tech from the Applied Sciences division of Wayne Enterprises. In Batman Begins, Alfred also mentions that he orders all of Batman's suit parts in large bulk from dummy corporations to distract suspicion. We ordered a main part of this car from Singapore. Via dummy corporation. And then quite separately, we place an order to a Chinese company for these. They'll have to be uh, large orders uh, to avoid suspicion, say uh, 10,000. Wayne's failure to do that in this episode leads to Cooper being found by Penguin. By the end, though, Batman changes his strategy. I had my backers set up dummy corporations to order the parts through, so no one can ever trace you again. I really like the flashback that shows how Earl got involved with Batman in the first place. He used to work for a company called Global Motors, who refused to listen to his warnings about the safety of their new car. The CEO hires goons to keep him quiet, which is where Batman, in the older suit we've seen him don in other flashbacks, arrived to stop them. Afterwards, Earl was out of a job and in desperate need of work when Batman approached him in the first Batmobile. That one looks similar to some of the original designs from the comics. He asks Cooper to build him a new car, and with unlimited resources, Earl designs and builds the modern Batmobile. This explanation is a bit contradictory to a nod to the origin of the vehicle in Mask of the Phantasm. A young Bruce is at the Gotham World's Fair with Andrea Beaumont, where he sees a car that looks almost exactly like his future Batmobile. Maybe he collaborated with Earl on the design, but either way, I do love how this one looks. It's right up there with the Burton version as the best looking Batmobile. In my opinion, that is. Eventually, Batman and Robin are able to escape the booby-trapped car before it's destroyed. They then apprehend Penguin and his henchmen. Later, Earl pledges to make a new Batmobile, one even better with more advanced technology. Penguin is then shown back in jail as the episode wraps up. One thing I wanted to bring up about Earl and the concept of someone else fixing the Batmobile is that something pretty close to that was almost the origin of Robin in Batman Returns. It's pretty well known now that Marlon Wayans was cast as Robin and set to appear in a small scene, although his only function in that film was supposedly fixing the Batmobile for Bruce while wearing a jumpsuit that had a small R on the chest. 
He ended up being cut from the movie before they even started shooting, but he was supposed to appear in what turned into Batman Forever before Tim Burton left the project. In the upcoming comic series Batman 89, the original writer from that first film, Sam Hamm, and artist Joe Quinanez are possibly going to explore that version of Robin and how he would have tied into that universe. There's even a concept image out there of Quinanez's artwork that was a part of a pitch he made for the series several years ago. Does that mechanic thing sound familiar? I wonder if Steve Perry, Laren Bright, and or Randy Rogel were privy to any of that information when writing this episode. They certainly could have had access to it. Did they use that idea after it was discarded from Returns, or was it just a coincidence? I'm genuinely curious. Anyway, Penguin has a few kind of funny, kind of awkward moments in this. The first involves his car pulling in front of the Batmobile. Did that car... F fart? <laughs> what? Why? After he's back in prison, Cobblepot is cleaning license plates when he delivers this winner. Ah, one bat for you. <laughs> I just love how Paul Williams says that. It's hilarious. The mechanic is not a traditionally amazing installment of the show, but it is different and interesting enough to recommend. With the late Paul Winfield voicing Earl, that flashback, and the curious history of this concept, it's worth seeing. Check it out. I think you'll enjoy this change of pace. B -b 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 that's all, folks. <laughs>